A big hello and a very warm welcome to Leaders of Tomorrow Season 8 with me, Sonali Krishna. Now, it's not breaking news when I say that ever since the Chinese video sharing social networking platform TikTok was banned in India, the race for India's TikTok amongst our very own homegrown players has intensified. Well, two such players have just have managed to hit the 25 million mark in the last one month itself and uh, i'm very pleased to have both of them today joining us right here on leaders of tomorrow to discuss their path their meteoric rise and where do they go from here very very pleased to introduce the co-founder of chingari sumit ghosh as well as the co-founder and cto of mitro tv anish kandilwal Thank you so much, Sumit and Anish, for joining me right here on Leaders of Tomorrow. And many congratulations on the meteoric rise both of you have seen in the last month or so. Nobody saw this coming. For you, Chingari, you've launched a while ago. You launched in the end of 2018. For Mitro TV, you launched in May 2020. What do I say? Perfect timing. So let me take it to you first, Sumit, since you've been an older player. None of you saw this coming. You've seen this sudden rise. Hence, all your bets going forward would be on the fact that TikTok needs to remain banned. Because if it comes back, then the mix is a bit different once again. So, uh, if you have been following our uh, journey and our story, uh, we were actually get, getting momentum even before TikTok was banned. And we had a, like a, we, we never thought that, you know, TikTok will actually be banned by the government. We never had a post-ban strategy. Uh, we, uh, so we have been organically gaining momentum since June. Um, and uh, this really started after Sonam Wangchuk's call to all the Indians that we Indians should uh, start using Indian apps and Indian hardware and uh, so we thought that okay we have an alternative that we have built an alternative and, and and that is something that gave us the push but obviously this this ban came as a welcome surprise and now we have a post ban strategy uh, which is to you know grow aggressively grow fast and execute execute really 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 quick end of the day this is you know this is a tech play uh, you have to build solid tech along with a community of users who love who are loyal to your product like they were loyal to tiktok in fact, uh, TikTok, uh, TikTokers are so loyal uh, that there was a YouTuber versus uh, TikToker challenge and, and, and you know war going on in the country. So uh, it's all about building a solid tech tech product with a uh, amazing user experience with and uh, backed by an amazing community. So when all these these three things come together, I, I don't think uh, even if a TikTok comes back, they will pose any threat. Before I come back to you, Sumit, let me take it to you, Anish. And you are a relatively newer player, launched in May 2020 and uh, outstanding in terms of sheer timing. Who would have known when you launched that there would have been an increase in the whole anti-China sentiment and hence we had our patriotic hat on and we are all anti-Chinese now. And to couple that, you have the biggest player in the world be banned. Many congratulations on luck being on your side. For players like you to continue to meteorically rise, you would have to bet on the fact that TikTok is, remains banned in the country simply because if just today's news says that the government has asked about 70 odd questions to TikTok and the other 58 apps that have been banned and expect them to revert in three weeks. What is your take when one strategically talks about that? You know, we had acquired 10 million user base by May and one month before the ban was announced. The idea was we, we saw a gap when we saw the whole COVID situation coming and the work from home had started for people. We saw a gap in the market of short video and that is what where we came in. What you tell about that TikTok being banned is a necessary uh, thing for us. I don't think so. That is a need for us. It has given us, a, it has created a void as of now, obviously, which uh, all of us are trying to fill in. So that is where the user acquisition has been very easy for us as of now. Otherwise, you know, the kind of user base which we have, we would have spent a whole lot of money to acquire that user base. But as of now, we can probably say that, you know, this has been organic for us. But frankly, uh, it has not been uh, any of our uh, contribution or our efforts towards it. It is just that the sentiment and the political situation has been such that we are getting these users. But we cannot keep on relying on this fact. There was a demand for an Indian product on this place. There has never been an Indian product which uh, which has uh, attempted this space uh, like we are trying to do as of now. And 
what we feel is that if we we have to focus on the product and this product is not uh, just a good look and feel it is a ml and ai driven uh, space and if we are not able to better ourselves on that space then we will not last so it is not just about tiktok there are other players also which are there in the market and which will be there in the market so uh, ban of tiktok is just a strong tailwind which has helped us acquiring the users as of now but retention will be the key factor for all of us now let me ask both of you this you both of you have hit the 25 million mark on the play store a now that you have this influx of customers what is your strategy in ensuring user engagement because that is clearly the name of the game to ensure that these users come to you stick with you and of course recommend you and as we speak we have more and more indian upstarts looking at the short form video space very intently so going forward i think all eyes on this space and and this space is definitely going to be hoarding up so you also have to ensure that you ward off competition whether international or from india uh, you're right uh, it is a retention game uh, in the end it is all about how well you are able to retain your users and that is what our focus has been we uh, we are spending a lot of energy and lot of focus uh, on to understanding the user attribute what exactly they need and all all our uh, as of now the, all the product roadmap is being designed based on that so like i said earlier also this is a game which will be driven by uh, deep tech uh, whether you talk about ar ml or ai uh, all of all these are necessity uh, to survive in this space and you have to create uh, cutting edge technologies and you have to have the algorithms which are which are actually in place to uh, serve the right set of content to this users I agree but what makes you think that only your app would be a provider of that I'm sure every other app would also be focused on that so what is it that you are doing or thinking of to ensure that let's say I as a user want to only be on Mitro and nobody else what is that big differentiating factor you're working on all the apps which we see on the market whether you talk about any of the short video apps or the video editing tool sets which are available on the market they are more created for a generic user base uh, they are more like a global software piece of software which is available for a generic user base the kind of issues which users see on our platform uh, and or the users which are facing uh, in general is our cultures change a lot the language it is not just about p- top picking the top 10 language and showing it over there the dialects change the kind of data which ne- they need changes a lot the kind of beauty effects which you create the kind of stickers you are working on they all have to be focused towards the culture so we have been working uh, or towards community building and we have been trying to understand the users uh, requirements and we are trying to look into how uh, we can build and come bring that out onto our product which we offer so when we talk about this all section of uh, our society all dialects all cultures should be able to represent themselves on the uh, app and once if we are able to do that then that will be a truly differentiating factor from a home grown product uh, than any of the international product which are going to be there on the market even if look one looked at tiktok and looked at their user base their user base was essentially tier 3 and tier 4 and i think they were struggling to get on users from uh, tier 1 and tier 2 and i think that was their big focus they were looking to get celebrities in and why are that popularized the app in india would you say this is the same kind of behavior and user base pattern you see with homegrown apps that are now in the race to take up that numero uno position are we also seeing more transition from you know users from tier 3 tier 4 than really the top tiers of the country so i have a slightly different view uh, in terms of what you are talking about so there were a lot of tier 1 creators in the platform even celebrities like shilpa shetty ritesh deshmukh um, her husband shilpa's husband and you know a lot of tier top tier celebrities also on tiktok creating like amazing content and uh, obviously the tier 2 and tier 3 cities uh, i mean these guys i mean they, there were certain creators uh, but but a lot of these guys are you know consumers so if you look at any ugc platform only 2% of the platform does uh, you know is 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 actually doing creation and the 98% of the platform is uh, only doing consumption it's the same story with uh, tiktok majority of of india lives in tier 2 and tier 3 cities and uh, tier 1 if a very uh, very small population i think i think 20 to 30% of the population is our tier 1 population so that is that, that is exactly what also you know we, uh, shows up in the app that a very small population which is doing creation uh, that belongs to tier 1 and a lot of consumption is happening in, in the tier 2 tier 3 and tier 4 cities <clears throat> obviously all the indian apps uh, including ours you know we are seeing us very similar very similar 
यूसेज पैटर्न और क्रिएशन पैटर्न एंड कंजम्पन पैटर्न Would you agree with me that the biggest challenge going forward for players such as you yourselves would be ensuring that your differentiation stands out the most because as we speak Instagram they have the money they have the reach and they're making all kinds of noises uh with their launch of Instagram Reels which is also focused in this space and they're of course taking advantage of TikTok getting banned i have been following the you know following the uh, instagram's launch of reels very closely i have ch checked out the app two days back um, and so uh, you know the, the, there is a there is a reason why uh, a facebook or a instagram or a twitter is very limited to uh, has been always limited to the tier 1 users of india or or so when i uh, so when i always say that we are building chingari for bharat so when i say bharat i mean the tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 and uh, you know these western networks uh, social networks they have never been able to get the usage patterns or the the the, the you know the demands and as anish was saying the localization of localized needs of you know the bharat users so i think a home grown app has a much more and bigger understanding in terms of the, the requirements and the needs and you know the usage uh, the the how the user behavior and how a, a bharat user wants to consume content than a western western counterpart who obviously is is rich in terms of uh, you know engineering and rich in terms of money uh, so I, i think the critical difference there is uh, how we we take we take on them take them on in terms of our understanding of our our country's user behavior so the reason why tiktok was able to penetrate uh and this is my personal understanding tiktok was able to penetrate penetrate uh, tier 2 3 and 4 cities is uh, because tiktok tiktok really understood that in terms of how china chinese apps uh, like china is very very similar to india in terms of you know uh, they have like huge cities beijing and guangzhou and shenzhen and then very very small you know tier 1 tier 2 uh, tier 2 tier 2 tier 3 cities around the countryside so so what what uh, what works in china and the strategy that works in china work very well for them in india us is very flat horizontal uh, country the culture is similar from the east from east to west uh, the, the culture is very same and uh, i think i think the products that come out from silicon valley just reflect that and uh, the culture here in india is very different so uh, i think there is there is a big differentiation let me ask you about mitro anish you've just raised 2 crores in seed funding how was your fundraising experience a uh, because i'm sure the fundraising experience in a lockdown environment must be completely different to let's say if this was a regular and ordinary world and b of course more importantly what are you looking to do with this funding how are you planning to utilize it going forward we were in talks with uh, 314 and arun tadnaki's uh, syndicate uh, since the beginning of uh, the product and uh, i mean what we for us what matters a lot is that uh, our thought process align uh, because it is not just a temporary thing which we want to target it is very important for investors to have the same mindset as uh, as the founders and that is where uh, we have been very lucky to have 314 and arun doing the seed round for us they have been more of a mentor to us and regarding the second part of your question uh, i mean uh, and to answer it yes i mean i had not seen their faces for a long time i mean we had a video call after a close the deal so yeah without seeing the faces uh, now we are talking about uh, fundraising so that is a different experiences to talk about how we are planning to utilize the fund uh, it is on b building the team uh, it is on uh, extending our tech team and the product team that is where the entire focus is going to be as of now What are you guys doing for data security and privacy and how are you looking to moderate controversial pieces and ensure brand safety because I'm assuming that your model will finally pivot around advertising and if that is the case the brand safety conversation even you know around social behemoths such as Facebook such as Google such as Twitter has increasingly been the narrative for now a few years with players like yourselves who are just about starting this game 
this is going to become a very very important factor so what is your thought process when i talk about all these different pillars the thing is that obviously the uh, moderation is a very important aspect of this entire uh, framework and moderation is not a easy task over here the, what we are talking about is whether the content is political in nature whether it is uh, demeaning for a particular class of people or a section of people i mean a content which is fine for you may not be fine for me so it is a very objective thing and we have to handle it in a different way so uh, we we are focusing a lot towards that we are building uh, beta users groups of moderators and a, a lot of focus is uh, going on there then how can uh, we do that because what we have seen is that uh, and we have we should learn from the mistakes with others have done and we have seen that there has been cases wherein people have not been able to take particular actions against this kind of content whenever they surface and uh, this is also one of the things which i see every time that you know there are pages or posts which people want to take to, take it down and then they uh, start campaigns again it it has become such a difficult task to moderate such things so a very active attention to this area uh, is also uh, on our agenda and it is not just for us any any person or any company who is in ugc has to be very aware of what exactly they are going to promote onto the platform it is actually uh, you have to take into account the users which are using it and the country laws and you have to abide by it but as you yourself said moderation is a tough one because what is okay for me is not okay for you so the entire gamut of subjects is so controversial and so subjective uh, depending on you know where you lean versus where i lean why don't you add to that sumit if i don't know it's a very very tricky and precarious situation to be in and yeah i mean it's a tough question to answer that's a tough one but i will try to answer that so we are all all for free speech like we welcome everyone to come on the platform and you know exercise their free speech rights uh, express themselves the way they want but free speech does does not mean hate speech so you cannot regular you know come and abuse someone on the platform free speech does not mean obscenity free speech does not mean vulgarity so uh, anything anything so we we have laid out a strict community standards anything against uh, any content which goes against that uh, in terms of you know violating the community community standards uh, will be taken down there are a couple of checkpoints that we have for that so we have users reporting the content and then we have an internal moderation team which i want to scale up uh, over time uh, and they will be constantly you know monitoring content and uh, along with that uh, there, there there is an ai algorithm that 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 you know we are working on which will be find, which, which will be finding you know hate speech vulgar content uh, you know profanic content on the platform and flagging it couple of things we are doing uh, and obviously this will be like a improving process over time uh, and but we will be doing our best to moderate uh, everything in the platform and and make sure you know uh, nothing which violates our community standards goes out uh, and becomes viral in in terms of going to the video feed of every every user Fair enough. And last question to both of you before I let you go. Where do both of you see your respective apps one year from now? And what is the milestone that you have in mind that you hope to achieve in the next 365 days? You could take it first, Anish. Our agenda is very clear. Our society, all sections of our society, and that is our agenda. We are looking to work with government very closely. One of the areas is skill development, which we want to promote over here. What we feel is that what YouTube or Netflix or Hotstar or any of this kind of platforms is for us. Uh, These platforms uh, are used not just for entertainment, but also for various other learning and other uh, tasks which we do uh, over video. And this is not a platform which uh, all part of our society can afford. And there, the mobile first videos come in handy. mobile first videos have to be very focused in two aspects one is they cannot uh, they should work in all kind of bandwidth network bandwidth another is the length of them has to be uh, the data consumption has to be less and the length of it has to be sufficient for mobile users because mobile users will get distracted very easily so our focus is going to be creating mobile first video where it is the uh, the kind of videos are not just entertainment or light humor but wherein skill development can come into picture imagine a platform wherein a government can talk about farming uh, techniques to all our farmers and it is kind of in a short video platform which every farmer can have accessibility to we are very much focused towards those aspects we want to uh, focus on that and i think one year from now what we believe is that we should be uh, there on our presentation should be there in all such sections of society great and uh, how about you samad for us uh, the next milestone that we have set for ourselves is next 3 months and the milestone is to hit at least 100 million users by next 3 months and give them a, a tiktok experience when a tiktok user comes to the platform he shouldn't feel the need of going back to tiktok 
and we will do everything in our power in our might <laughs> Uh, in our uh, in our strength to to make it happen i'm wishing both of you all the very best more power to you more energy to you and uh, may we as homegrown apps not only traverse our own country but also go on to international waters this is my hope for you and all the very best and thank you so much for taking time out and joining us right here on leaders of tomorrow